All right, it's lesson six in unit one. Unit one is a look at pre-calculus and some limit stuff. And so we're going to take a look at some limit stuff. Specifically today, we're going to look at limits at infinity or involving infinity. That's the goal of today's lesson. It's very familiar to you from your work in pre-calculus, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, the first thing we want to take a look at is the idea of a horizontal asymptote. And I'll throw a quick definition up there just for you. The line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of y equals f of x if either, either the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals b or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals b. How do we know that a graph has a horizontal asymptote? Well, no, no, sorry. How do we know? Well, we go and try to graph something like maybe 2x over square root of x squared plus 4. And we see that as we trace further and further in the horizontal direction, the y values settle down. Because what is a horizontal asymptote after all? It defines the end behavior. It describes the end behavior of a function. So... There's a horizontal asymptote here and a horizontal asymptote here because as x goes further and further up toward positive infinity, the function is settling down there. And as x goes further and further in a negative direction, we settle down at that line. So let's do it. Let's find the horizontal asymptotes for that graph, y equals 2x over radical x squared plus 4. Let's do that. To find them, we take a limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over radical x squared plus 4. And I think you will remember from our pre-calculus work that as x gets bigger and bigger without bound, that really doesn't matter much. Having infinity squared and then adding 4 really doesn't make a big difference. And so we said that this limit was the same as the limit of 2x over the square root of x squared. And the square root of x squared is just a fancy name for the absolute value of x. And as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger without bound, that's 2. And so we would say that y equals 2 is a horizontal asymptote. But it works the other way. We can take a limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x over square root x squared plus 4. And as x gets bigger and bigger in a negative direction, that plus 4 becomes increasingly irrelevant, has less and less of an effect on the function. And so I've got a limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x over the absolute value of x. Now remember, x is getting larger and larger in a negative direction. And so your numerator is a really large negative number. But your denominator is a half as large positive number. And so we don't get 2, we get negative 2. And so y equals negative 2 is a horizontal asymptote. A uh, couple of side notes here. One, there are at most two horizontal asymptotes. At most two. Sometimes those values are the same, in which case there is one horizontal asymptote. Sometimes neither of those limits exist, which would mean no horizontal asymptotes. But there could be two. 
there could be two. Uh, a couple of years ago in an AP exam, the College Board threw out a question because students found this one but not this one. And so the, the, the question came back so statistically bad that they chucked the question. And that says an awful lot. And then all us AP teachers, we got a note that said, hey, how come you people don't teach for real? So I am going to teach for real. When you're looking for horizontal asymptotes, there are at most two. You take a limited infinity and a limited negative infinity. I will give you a moment to do a quick OYO. y equals 4x minus 1 over absolute value of x minus 4. So go ahead, hit the pause button, and try to figure out where the horizontal asymptotes are for that function. Could be 2, could be 1, could be 0. Hit the pause button. Okay, I'm assuming that you hit the pause button. As x gets larger and larger in a positive direction, this gets closer and closer to 4, and as x gets uh, larger and larger in a negative direction, the numerator is negative, the denominator is positive, we get closer and closer to negative 4. Okay? Okay. So, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes. The line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of the graph of y equals f of x if either the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x is either infinity or the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x is either infinity. We should note here, for horizontal asymptotes, we had at most two. For vertical asymptotes, you can have as many vertical asymptotes as you like, because any time you decide to have a function shoot up to infinity or shoot down to negative infinity, you've got a vertical asymptote. The normal way this happens is to have a rational function whose denominator could be zero. Something like this. This is the normal way vertical asymptotes pop into a problem. And so we say to ourselves, selves, if the denominator were to be zero, x is negative two, and sure enough, if we try to figure out what f of negative 2 is, we sub that in, we get 5 over 0. That's catastrophic. And so that's, a, that, that's just beyond problematic. Um, we can confirm that our definition is true. We can take the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right-hand side. And this is that business we played around with in a pre-calculus course last year. As x approaches negative 2 from the right, the numerator gets closer and closer to 5. The denominator, we're substituting numbers like negative 1.9999999999. And so this is approximately negative 6, but it's just short of negative 6, plus 6, that's 0. And so we are shooting up to positive infinity. And so sure enough, x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote because the limit as we approach from the right is positive infinity. In fact, if we were to take the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left-hand side, the same kind of thing would happen. The numerator is still approximately 5. The denominator, now remember, our x values are things like negative 2.00001. And so this is negative 6-ish, but it's a shade under negative 6. It's like negative 6.000 something. And so the denominator is very, very close to 0, but I'm going to say that it's called negative 0 because it's a teeny tiny number, but it's a negative teeny tiny number. And so, just like in our pre-calculus course, this heads down to negative infinity. So it happens in this particular case that both limits, the limits from either side, 
are one of the infinities, but that does not have to be true. If the limit from either side is one of the infinities, then we have a vertical asymptote. If you draw a function where we are A-OK -okay through here, but all of a sudden we've got this going on, then x equals 0 is still a vertical asymptote. Um, I'll dispel one more thing for you. It is possible for the function to touch a vertical asymptote, but only on one side. Um, calculus is one of those weird things. We look at all possible cases. This particular function, I don't know what the equation for this particular function would be. Uh, it seems to violate all sorts of rules. It approaches infinity coming from the right, but it's, it's a nice number coming from the left, but who cares? As long as the limit as we approach zero from either side is one of the infinities, we've got a vertical asymptote. So those are the things that we really should know going into a classroom discussion on asymptotes, and you are all set.